lain dalam 4 minit lagi. 10-5 minit kita start kelas eh. Alright, okay, I think semua dah ada. So, I think we can start our class today. Okay, hopefully semua orang okay, line okay, uh, berada di tempat yang okay. Okay, di rumah ke, dekat mana ke. Okay, saya dah uh, sign in your attendance in Aib al -Dim. Thank you very much sebab berjaya masuk ke kelas ini. So we have uh, here today I um, actually um, uh, today class is quite uh, simple okay and we also we need to finish actually we have one hour okay based on the what we provide by Jimmy we only uh, have one hour 60 minutes but we have 52 slides that we need to finish okay so we try go to to do it quickly I try to do it quickly okay so uh, without further ado we start our class okay bismillahirrahmanirrahim okay so we continue our transcriptomics okay so in the previous class we learned about uh, transcriptomics uh, what type of transcriptomics right um, uh, and then we learn about uh, microarray a little bit. We learn about qPCR. We learn about uh, RNA sequencing. This is more on RNA sequencing, ref sequencing, de novo sequencing, and so on. But in today class, okay, in week seven, you only need to know about the basic thing about the transcriptomics. Okay, what is transcriptome? So transcriptome in 1999, okay, according to a board, they say that the transcriptomes, okay, is referred to mRNA that expressed by genome at entire uh, at any given times, okay. But before we know about the transcriptomes, we also need to know a little bit about the genes, okay. So genes, uh, actually, uh, because they are um, quite uh, related to each other, genes, and then we transcribe into the um, we will transcribe the gene to produce the mRNA, right? So we have uh, genes, okay, genes can be defined as uh, abstractions that is useful for the purpose of nomenclature uh, and for the assignments of the symbols. And it actually describes the unit of inheritance and has uh, since been described as a set of features on the genomes that can produce a function unit. Okay, so this what uh been uh, reported by Wind in two thousand. Okay, and you can see the the normal culture of the uh, the details of the work in this link. Okay, 
so other than that they mention also that these genes actually they evolve okay they evolving uh they punya terms to evolving and it say that is a complexity they say that uh, they found that genes is uh, incredibly uh, incredible complexity of the biological and molecular process and they also discovered that gene have a junk dna that uh, important in our regulatory functions okay and but compared to prokaryote and eukaryote they have a difference lah kamu pun tahu uh, if you do the gene predictions in prokaryote is difference with gene prediction concept in uh, eukaryotes okay because in eukaryote it's quite complex okay compared to the prokaryote so if in the uh, you uh, eukaryotes uh, prokaryotes okay the genomes consist almost entire of axons okay macam dalam uh, e coli dekat dalam bacillus dalam bacteria microbes mostly their punya genomes are consist of axon but compared to eukaryotes which is our own kita humans homo sapiens uh, 20% only uh, we have a function okay genes that code for the functions other than that is the introns okay and in uh, 1998s also uh, williams okay uh, that right uh, that uh, they published a paper in database in genomic research they say that uh, they have a term of genes that limited the value and might be uh, but in fact be a hindrance to our understandings of the genomes okay and although this may sound heretical okay especially coming from the card carrying genetics it reflects that uh, it reflects the fact that unlike chromosome genes are not physical objects but uh, more lead to concept merely concept that have acquired a great deal of historic baggage over the past decades so this is what we know about genes okay you need to know a little bit about gene kenapa gene tu kita tahu kita tahu dia punya terms because it will affect the your understanding in term of the transcriptomes okay so this is the okay the currently dia punya the this uh, is described the number of genes okay such as the estimations uh in semua okay in eukaryote and also prokaryote you can see in homo sapiens we have estimate around 226 uh thousands of genes mus musculus 2000 uh 26000 also uh, the neo radio okay 22,000 okay and so on lah and we can see in the the smallest one is Saccharomyces cerevisiae as cerevisiae which is the yeast around 7,000 7, only okay and then we can see the plants okay Arabidus italiana is the the got the the highest number of the genes okay okay this is for the uh, example even though the Arabidus italiana compared to human sapiens the size is quite small but the number of genes is uh, lagi banyak compared dengan uh, homo sapiens okay so this is the concept of centrodroma actually you already know in our early class okay in earlier class kita pun in our week one lagi uh, i already explained to you we have two type of centrodroma satu centrodroma yang dari segi genomes Okay, satu lagi dari segi yang kita belajar ni lah DNA will be transcribed into RNA and then will be translated into a protein. This is the concept of your central dogma. So, uh, the central dogma we know that the mRNA is the single stranded RNA molecules. Okay, uh, DNA is the complementary. We need to have double. Okay, and then we have a process uh, which which is we call it as a splice. Okay uh for rna during the uh transcriptions okay and then it carry the sequence of the genes out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm where it can be translated into a protein so after they generate the pre mrna it will be bring out okay uh they by the nucleus into a cytoplasm and it will be translated into a proteins okay by the ribosomes okay so actually this one you everyone is clear semua okay kan semua tidur ke okay okay doctor okay okay, okay. all right so bila we can see after we look 
uh, bila kita map balik, okay, number of genes and number of transcripts yang ada dekat sini, we can see this totally different, okay. So, kalau sebelum ni kita ada banyak ni genes, okay, kalau kita tengok in term of homo sapiens, okay, uh, hanya 26 ribu, okay, ataupun 26 uh, thousands, but, but uh, in term number of transcript yang dihasilkan that have been produced is quite large, quite banyak lah. Okay, dia lagi banyak dia produce which is 63,000 of transcripts. Okay, so you can see the difference, the number is double. Okay, double kalau kamu nampak lah. Okay, 26k kita macam double kan dia jadi 48k of transcripts. Okay, transcript kita yang dia, dia produce. Okay, so Sebab because they have the uh, the event that we call it as a splice event, okay? So, so this is include the RNA genes and but do not include the pseudo genes, okay? So, kita nampak uh, bila uh, the complex, the the uh, the number, the the organism is complex, dia punya number of transcript tu pun macam-macam makin banyak. So, if you look at this s you can see the number of 7,000, number of transcript also 7,000. So, like, walaupun dia punya apa, density of the genes in the genome is very macam penuh kan. But, dia punya uh, number of transcript remain the same compared to other uh, organism. Okay, you carry punya organism, uh, kita boleh nampak in term of the, dia punya number of gene to makin banyak. Okay. So, kita tengok dekat sini what is transcription unit ataupun kita namakan STU. Actually, transcription unit is a set of number. Okay, a set of one or more gene transcribed from a single promoter. Okay, it may also include the regulatory protein binding site affecting this promoter or terminator and terminator. So, this is what the, orang kata apa? the meanings of transcription units, okay? A set of one or more genes transcribed from a single promoter, okay? A single gene may have uh, multiple transcripts, okay? And multiple distinct protein with multiple function by means of alternative splicings and alternative transcription initiation and termination site. So this is what stated by Craig uh, in the uh, of the human's genome in 2001. So, kita punya genes boleh dapat banyak transcripts, boleh dapat banyak proteins dan boleh hasilkan banyak function. So, setengah-setengah konsep ni macam kalau dia konsep dia have a certain gene, okay, in dia punya dia bagi satu set of genes, mungkin dia boleh hasilkan sebab dia banyak exon, okay. So, dalam satu gene tu dia banyak exon. This is for eukaryote, eh. So, they have a lot of exon. Dia boleh be transcribed, okay. Sebab dia ada banyak set, okay, exon. Okay, into macam katakan ABC transporter ke ataupun heat shock protein ke. Dia ada satu family. Okay, kalau kamu tengok dalam satu maksudnya dia ada subunit A, B, C sampai G gitu kan. So, kadang-kadang dia dihasilkan oleh satu gene sahaja yang di transcribe pada keadaan yang berbeza-beza. Okay, dan menghasilkan family yang berbeza-beza. So, it can be like that. And also, it can be coded by different type of genes. Maksudnya, dia ada satu gene lain pula yang tolong tengok kat dia tu. Okay? Semua okay kan? So, then, lepas kita dah tahu apa itu transcription unit, kita dah tengok apa maksud transcription tu sendiri. Transcriptome itu sendiri. So, kita tengok dia punya proses. Okay? This is the what you have learned in your, uh, I think, in a uh, plan biotechnology kan? Betul tak? Ataupun plan genetics ataupun principles of plan science. I think you already learn about this. Betul tak? Dekat CP, CFS pun I think maybe dah ada sikit uh, apa knowledge about this one right? Betul. Okay. So, so I do not need to elaborate more about this uh, uh, process, this mechanism, okay, uh, because you already know the concept. Just we go through secara terus, okay, 
cepat saja kita lalu, kita go through. So this they have four step here. If you can see here they have four step which is the first one is initiation. Okay. The initiation and then we have a promoter clearance and then we have elongation and terminations. So for initiations, a group of protein kita nam uh, call as transcription factor mediated. Okay. Uh, in the bindings of uh, will mediate the bindings of uh, RNA polymerase and they will start the transcription process okay this is the call the 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 group of protein yang dalam bentuk ni akan datang and it will uh, bind lah okay and then they will uh, clear the promoter okay the RNA polymerase must clear the promoter uh, once the first bond has been synthesized before RNA polymerase lost the uh, its tendency to slip away and premature uh, release the RNA transcripts okay so they akan uh, they akan clearkan promoter and then baru dia they start the once the the elongation step okay the the strength of DNA okay serve as the template for RNA synthesis okay dia akan buat but multiple round of transcription may occur so that many copy of gene may be produced. So, dia boleh jadi banyak, banyak uh, proses uh, transcription ni. Okay. Mungkin okay, sebab dia daripada yang macam saya mention tadi, dia daripada par, uh, daripada genes yang sama tapi dia mungkin dia akan uh, maksudnya dia tengok kepada exon tu yang mana yang dia akan uh, synthesize. Okay. So this is elongations and the terminations is the release of the newly synthesized mRNA from the elongation complex. Then you got your uh, RNA yang dah ditranscribekan. So macam itulah proses dia. Start dengan initiation macam kamu belajar dia ada dia punya complex of proteins and then kita start dengan promoter it will bind, will initiate the process and then they will uh, uh, elongate okay they will uh, pakai the, the template of kita punya ni uh, kita punya DNA akan jadi templates akan dia akan jadi dia akan copy banyak-banyak produce kita punya and then at the end dia akan uh, release okay the protein akan keluar the complex akan keluar and they will have a new synthesis of mRNA. This is the uh, actually the basics uh, mechanism lah yang I think you maybe akan in term of plant biotech maybe you learn more details about it okay. So and they also have waktu dia nak hasilkan kita punya dia dah hasilkan kita punya RNA that what which we call it as a pre-mRNA kita kenalah uh, lakukan sikit spliceosome okay ataupun proses splicing okay yang ada kita namakan uh, small nuclear uh, ribos ribonucleoprotein and okay, and other proteins from a molecular complex that we call it as a splice a splice okay <coughs> on the pre mrna containing the exon and the instron okay so this is a splice zones punya complex okay kat sini dia ada jenis macam-macam ada proteins or snrnp okay ataupun small nuclear ribonucleoproteins okay so that they will uh, join the uh, exon together and uh, cut out the introns okay so this is the concept of the splicing splicing of uh, pre rma uh, molecule uh, it occur in several steps that are uh, catalyzed by SNRNPs ataupun we call it as small nuclear ribonucleoproteins. Okay so they have macam ni kat sini dia nak cerita we have U1 uh, SNRNP bind to the 5 prime or splice sites and 5N of the introns. Okay yang ni dia, dia bind and then uh, the 3N of exon is cut and join to the branch side by the hydroxyl groups okay at three end okay three prime ends of the axon that attacks the phosphodiester bonds at the three prime sites uh, splice sites okay and as a result they will generate the axon which is we call it as uh, l1 and l2 okay uh, okay by covalent bounds okay 
and yang lain tu akan dalam bentuk yang punya intron kita tu akan uh, it will form the lariat okay the lariat containing the intron is released okay dia akan bentuk dalam lariat and it will be released okay so maksudnya kalau kat sini we have five primes we have five prime kat sini and the three prime akan melekat uh, each other untuk buat lariat okay so in term of splicing uh, splicing punya mechanism we have two uh, different group which is we call it as group 1 and group 2 introns okay the, that kita tengok in the within the organelle okay group 1 is more common compared to group uh, 2 okay so they also occur in nuclear genes uh, of lower eukaryotes. Okay, kalau eukaryot yang lower-lower eukaryot, okay, uh, banyaklah sikit uh, untuk group 1 ni. Okay, selalunya group 2 ni dia lebih kompleks lah. Okay, group 1 and group 2 uh, not related. Okay, but they are can uh, do the auto splice. Okay, and the secondary structure of the intron RNA form the catalytic sites. So this is the group 1, the difference between the group 1 and group 2. So most intron are removed using a large complex that we call is a spliceosome, okay. Uh, punya complex, spliceosome punya complex and uh, some intron are capable of self-splicing, okay. Ni self-splicing in the group 2 and they have the complex of uh, proteins, okay, splice, uh, splice zones, okay, yang ni kita namakan as a, a group 1 introns. So we look at the group 1 intron first and then we will look at the group 2. So basically yang ni you dah pernah belajar in term of group 1, we have a nuclear RNA genes, okay, of the lower eukaryotes, okay, yang ni contoh uh, lower eukaryotes and uh, the genes of fungal mitochondria and a few genes in a phage T4 and bacteria. So kebanyakan group 1 ni ada dekat sini. Okay, group 1 intron ni dia ada dekat sini which is the lower eukaryotes. Okay, the genes of the fungal mitochondria ataupun a few genes in phage T4 or N bacteria. So ini ada kategori-kategori uh, di mana kita boleh jumpa group 1 introns. Okay, so group 1 introns Okay, they have uh, intron structure. Okay, this is the structure. They have secondary structure folds into the tertiary structure and they have two type of benda which is we have said we can say that they have a guanine binding pockets. Okay, here the guanine binding pockets and they have internal guide sequence IGS here. So guanine pockets and IGS here. So this one yang akan tengok siapa uh, kita punya uh, ni dia punya structure, okay, dia punya complex structure of the uh, group 1 introns, complex, okay. So, they have dia punya guanosins binds, okay, dia guanins binding pocket, dekat guanin binding pockets tu, dia adalah dekat mana uh, dia akan at attach kita punya 3 prime OH tu, okay. Guanosins attack the phosphate at the 5 primes end of introns. So, you have uh, three primes, uh, we have five prime to three prime. So the three OH okay, of uh, uh, guanosins um, Akan attack the five uh, prime end of introns. Okay Yang ni yang bagi introns. Okay, kamu kena tengok dekat sini. Dekat sini. Phosphate group kat sini. So we have three uh, Three prime OH. Okay, akan attack the phosphate uh, at the 5, ni kita punya introns, 5N of introns. Uh, dia berlaku kat sini. Okay, so dekat sini. This is what uh, uh, gu, uh, guanin punya binding pockets. Okay, sebab kita ada dua kan. Okay, so the next one, the 3OH, okay. Uh, yang tadi tu dia akan attack 5'-phosphate uh, five, uh, five prime phosphate of axons and then uh, axon 1 will, uh, the 3OH of axon 1 Okay, three prime of uh, uh, OH ni akan uh, attack the five phosphate of axon. So yang ni akan attack ke sini lah yang ada axon. So this is your intron and this is the axon. So dia akan attack dia. Okay. So bila dia attack, dia akan masuk. Okay, dia akan 
and then the internal guide sequence okay will pair with five prime of introns okay and three guanin bind in guanin binding pocket so then yang ni akan release dan dia akan hasilkan five prime to three primes okay so yang ni dia akan buat okay for group one intron ni circulation punya part okay so in term of the group two okay so this is the group one semua okay kan nampak kan dia punya macam mana dia dia bind so in term of group two ni dia punya konsep if they need to have uh, they share a, a common mechanism and then contain the conserve part okay which we call it as uh, conserve A at the branch point site, conserve G at the five prime uh, supply site and conserve uh, G at three prime supply site. So dekat tepi-tepi ni dia ada G yang conserve. Okay dekat dalam intron tu memang kamu boleh nampak. Okay and then dekat tengah tu dia ada satu branch point A yang conserve. Okay dekat dalam intron tu. Sebab dia nak berlakunya proses splicing ni nanti. Okay. Okay so dia punya ni. So this is the concept. Okay the OH branch point. Okay. Attacks the phosphoryl groups. Okay. Okay phosphoryl groups. Okay. Uh, dekat branch point A. Okay. Dia akan bind dekat sini. Uh, and uh, group of conserve 5G. Okay, dekat yang G ni akan buat macam ni. Okay, then the 3, three prime OH of uh, 5 prime exons. So, 5 prime exons, we have 3, three prime OH kat sini. Bila dia dah tak ada kawan kat sini. So, they will attack the phosphoryl groups at 3 prime supply site sebelah sini. Okay. Uh, dia akan attack dekat sini. So yang ni akan join dan yang ni akan keluar. So that is the concept for uh, group 2 introns. Okay the exon akan join together then the introns akan kita uh, bila dia bentuk dalam lariat punya lariat uh, punya form dia akan release keluar. Okay. So this is the concept for introns too. Okay, so tapi dia tak ada uh, satu kompleks protein, okay. Tapi dia lebih kepada conserve site, okay. So that is the difference between group 1 and group 2, okay. Most splicing carry out by the splicer zones, okay. And they have five, uh, five uh, small nuclear uh, ribo, ribonuclear proteins, okay. This is the ribonuclear protein which is U1, U2, U4. U5, U6. Okay. So this is what they have. Uh, the 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 proteins that they have. Okay. 150 proteins. Okay. Of uh, small nuclear ribonuclear proteins. And RNA free proteins. And also they have SN uh, protein RNA. Okay. So this is. Dia uh, punya complex lah. Kalau dia bentuk tu. So this is the um, the event kalau kamu in detail okay macam mana untuk dia yang tadi tu dia punya konsep saja tanpa melibatkan uh, saya tak cerita about the U1, U2, U4, U5 and U6. So this is the dia punya cerita okay bagaimana U1 akan bind dekat 5 prime or supply sites and then U2 will bind to the proteins tracks okay. So yang ni dia, dia melibatkan the the proteins okay and then when the u2 will replace okay lepas tu masuk pula u4 and then we have uh, kat sini a uh, uh, branch uh, side attacks uh, yang ni dia balik balik yang ni macam kita tengok yang tadi tu uh, branch side a attacks the five prime sites a uh, supply sites okay that forming three way junctions and then we have a uh, five prime uh, supply sites attack the three prime sites okay freely freeing the introns okay lariats and forming the mrna product so this is uh, the punya mechanism okay uh, all introns macam mana process a splice by the splicesomes punya proteins okay 
and this is what we call it as alternative splicing so you dah tengok macam mana proses uh, splicing okay uh, they have dua jenis groups okay sekarang kita nak tengok pula alternative splicing okay semua okay ke ketidur okay 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 is okay, okay. 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 So this is the alternative spicing. Okay. Alternative spicing as I mentioned is a, dia boleh jadi macam-macam. They have multi axon gene demonstrate the, mul, uh, demonstrate alternative usage of each axons. Okay. So you have here, kalau kamu nampak kat sini, kita ada empat axon tapi yang dia menghasilkan dua jenis protein protein yang berbeza work, ataupun dua jenis transcribe okay transcribe yang akan hasilkan dua jenis protein lah kan transcribe yang uh, berbeza-beza okay dia melibatkan combination uh, axon yang berbeza-beza maksudnya yang ni nombor satu nombor dua uh, nombor tiga nombor empat tapi yang first Uh, alternative bila dia ada half alternative splicing ni dia akan hasilkan satu tiga dengan empat. Yang ni dua empat dua tiga dan empat. Okay so they have this is what we call it as a alternative splicing. So alternative splicing uh, show uh, to uh, it show that it's very uh, important in uh, biology and also medicines. Okay. Uh, in term of human genome, kita ada 40,000 genes but kita boleh, kita, kita uh, we can identify that we have almost uh, 100k okay, proteins. Okay, maksudnya dia hasilkan banyak lagi proteins. Sebab apa? Sebab kita banyak transcribe yang lain. Maksudnya dalam satu set of uh, axon tu yang kita katakan satu gene tu dia boleh, maybe dia boleh hasilkan dua atau tiga jenis protein yang berbeza. Okay. Maybe daripada family yang sama tapi function yang berbeza. Yang ni yang kita namakan dia sebagai uh, parallax. Okay. Dia boleh jadi dia lebih kurang function lebih kurang sama tapi macam, macam lebih kurang macam duplication lah sikit. Ada perbezaan sikit. Okay. And we estimate 50% of the point mutation that lead to the human disease results from the error in the splicing punya uh, event. Okay, and they have uh, numerous uh, examples of development, decision and cellular function uh, on the timing of the alternative splicing. And we estimate the average around 3 to 4 splice variants per gene. Maksudnya dekat dalam satu gene yang kita nama, yang keluar, yang kita predict daripada uh, proses yang kita buat prediction tu, katakan you have predicts to 7,000 gene. So satu gene tu mungkin dia boleh hasilkan tiga atau empat jenis protein. Okay, dia jenis tiga atau empat jenis protein. Disebabkan tu lah bila you kalikan tujuh ribu tu Katakan lagi tujuh ribu kan, you have seven thousand. So we multiply with four dalam dua puluh lapan ribu transcribe. Uh, transcribe and also proteins. Okay, so this is what alternative splicing they're all about lah. Okay, dia boleh jadi, this is the pattern of alternative splicing. At the moment I think tak, tak banyak lah program uh, software yang boleh lagi uh, predict the alternative punya site. Okay, alternative punya site uh, dekat dalam satu-satu uh, prediction. Maksudnya kalau kamu predict protein tu, predict gene tu, uh, kita tak boleh nak, uh, maksudnya kita tak boleh nak predict betul-betul uh, dia punya tempat dia, uh, yang ni akan uh, akan uh, di transcribekan kepada beberapa transcribe. Okay, dia akan ditranscribekan kepada beberapa jenis uh, protein. Ha, yang tu kita tak tak at the moment tak tak ada lagi lah software yang boleh uh, 100% predict betul ha, benda ni. Ada yang macam boleh kata uh, jumpa tapi semua ni kita perlu ada support by the lab work punya kerja. Okay. So this is the pattern. Okay for 
uh, ethylene displacing, which is the, the, the cancel of introns. So this is, uh, they will have, maksudnya macam ni, uh, they generate the cassette of introns, okay, axons, okay, sama ada dia ambil yang terus, ataupun dia akan jadikan macam ni. And then they retain the introns, okay, ataupun uh, be retained of introns, ataupun uh, exclusive the intron, uh, the axons, sama ada dia akan uh, ambil semua, this is the first one, and then they skip this one, and they hasilkan, dia ambil only yang nombor uh, this one. And then ataupun uh, competing, okay, uh, five prime supply sites, okay, yang ni dia ambil dekat depan, yang dia ambil dekat sini. Ataupun competing the three prime supply sites or multi poly A sites ataupun multiple promoters, okay. So this is ada satu, dua, ada tujuh. Okay, pattern of alternative splicing. Okay, so if you a developer, okay, for software developer ni, you want to identify semua, uh, is is very difficult lah. Okay, sebab you nak kena buat satu uh, algorithm that can uh, read all these situations. It's not easy lah untuk semua kamu dapat suruh dia baca. Okay. Okay, so we have alternative splicing. Okay, this is the the relevance. Okay, dia punya akan apa? Um, kenapa kita perlu have to have the alternative splicing? Which is in term of uh, we can see that it will uh, okay relevance of the alternative splicing. They will have the relatively a small number of genes generate a surprising complex proteomes. And then they have a plasticity of splicing. Okay, they will uh, show you the involvement in the disease. Okay, more and more disease seem to be related to abnormal uh, splicing patterns. Okay, then barulah kita nak tengok. This is the the concept of astrolysis splicing lah. So, yang ni saya takkan uh, go in detail. Okay, sebab kita, kita nak kena tengok yang lain pula. So, and uh, you can read yourself lah yang ni pasal uh, the concept of alternative splicing ni. Ni you boleh baca dia punya ni saya dah tulis. Okay. And then we have a structure and the function consequence of alternative splicing. So, apa uh, dari segi dia punya uh, function of alternative splicing ni akan effect Okay, dia punya structure and function ni akan consequence the alternative splicing ni dari segi bila you punya structure and function ni they will affect in term of ion channel signal behavior alter. Okay, and then it will uh, alter the protein-protein binding surface and also it will alter the enzymes active sites. Okay, bila kita ada consequence in term the ada sikit perbezaan dari segi alternative splicing punya uh, benda. And then we have enzyme allosteric uh, sites. Okay, also will be alter. Uh, DNA binding module shuffle. Shuffle. And then membrane metal binding uh, surface also will be alter. Okay. So, yang ni adalah uh, consequence. Bila kita dari segi structure and functions, uh, bila kita ada sikit uh, bila ada sedikit perubahan dekat splicing sites punya alternative splicing site ni. So, ini ada 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so 6. 6 ke? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, dia boleh effect dari segi banyak benda. Okay, kamu mungkin kamu kata, okay, kita kita ubah dekat DNA yang paling teruk. Kita kata, we, we change the DNA structure, uh, it will totally change the structure of the transcribe, the structure of the protein. Kita punya konsep, kita faham macam tu. But actually, uh, this, uh, the structure and the functional of the alternative splicing juga will affect benda lain. Okay, juga is important. Okay, we need to to consider this one. So if you have uh, the changes in term of the functional, okay, or structural of this site, you can see they have a uh, difference, okay, in term of the DNA binding uh, module. Um, the metal binding surface or the membrane uh, surface, 
uh, then also will be different. So this one, okay, as I mentioned dekat bawah tu, also dia dah cerita, okay, in term of the ion channel signal behavior alter, uh, ini uh, dah diceritakan dekat dalam uh, this paper, which is you can go and see lah, okay. They have, uh, okay, they have told about this uh, situation. Okay, so in term of the protein-protein binding surface, how they alter, ini already stated by Gabby. Okay, uh, pasal structure dia, macam mana protein-protein ini interact dan apa beza dia. Okay, dan apa yang uh, dia will exhibit different protein ligand binding preference. So macam mana dia boleh uh, effect bila dia punya structure dia tu berbeza okey dia ni akan uh, akan jadi berbeza lah macam mana dia nak recognize the protein yang lain okey sebab dia punya structure dah beza okey so this is for the protein protein binding surface uh, okey and then kalau dari segi enzyme sites also will be alter okey uh, will be change okey ini kita tengok uh, in term of this uh, by the research by Maria. Maria I think Maria in 1998 macam mana dia punya enzymatic site to change. Okay. Bila kita pakai uh, tengok alternative splice uh, uh, yang berbeza. Okay. And then we have uh, in term of the membrane or mental binding surface. Okay. Uh, uh, ini also kamu boleh nampak macam mana bila dia ada beza dekat sini. Maksudnya difference isozymes display alter the pattern of calcium binding affinity and membrane binding behavior. So mungkin kat sini adalah yang control dia punya uh, membrane binding. So this one yang akan bezakan dia. So bila dia untuk first cycle yang ni dia ambil kira this one uh, ada, this one tak ada. So this one lain pula. So they have the several types. Okay. So it will change in term of that. Okay. Okay. So this is an example. Okay. I will not go in detail. Okay. So uh, I think you every, everyone can read. Okay. Uh, sendiri. Okay. Based on the example given. Okay. Um, okay. So how is alternative splicing regulated? Okay. And who are the player? So yang ni pun kita nak kena tengok juga. So this is the regulations of the uh, splicing regulations. Okay. Ini adalah uh, kita nak tengok dia punya siapa dia punya uh, dia ada regulator. Okay. And as a, a repressure. Okay. Which is dia punya player lah. Okay. Kita dah tengok dia punya konsep of the splicing tu. Apa beza kalau kita tengok dia punya kalau sites tu berbeza dia akan effect apa benda. So in term of regulations uh, ini adalah process of uh, splicing. Okay. We have serine arginine rich proteins. Okay. SR. Okay. Kat sini SR serine arginine which uh, bind to um, exonic splicing enhancer. Okay. ESE and recruit the U1, okay, U1, okay, uh, nuclear protein ni, ribonucleoproteins, uh, small uh, nuclear uh, ni, U1s and to U, uh, U2AF to correct the splicing sites. And then U1 will bind to 5 prime of sites and U2AF ni will bind out at the 3 prime of uh, supply side. So kat sini you have U1 and then they have U2. So dengan dia ada dekat sini ada serine arginine rich proteins. Okay kat sini. Sebelum berlakunya proses tu. So this is the player lah. Kamu tengok. Protein will bind to either azonics or intronic splicing enhancer ESE or ISE intronic splicing uh, silencer Okay, uh, and then the enhancer protein will enhance the splicings at the splice sites and the uh, uh, repressor proteins inhibits or repress the splicing at the splice sites, okay, which is the both trans regulations. So this is the 
activator SR proteins, okay, this is the activator, is determined whether a particular splice site is used in the particular cell types or at a particular stage of development. So, SR protein ni yang akan determine, okay, sama ada dia perlu atau tak. And then, we have this U2AF splicing factor yang saya katakan dia, ber, dia akan tengok dekat belakang tu, okay. That will RS uh, and then we have RS domain kat sini RS domain uh, mediates interact with other protein in the splicing machinery recruiting the machinery to a nearby splicing sites. So this is the RS domain. Okay. So this is the player ataupun all benda-benda yang kena ada uh, in the process of splicing. And then membrane heterologous nuclear ribonuclear protein okay and then uh, the legs of RS domain to recruit the need this is the ref, uh, repressor so ini activator activator you need to have process ni kalau tak 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 jalan so dia kena ada SR proteins dia kena ada U2F U2AF splicing factor so untuk repressor kalau you kurang RS domains dia tak akan berlaku lah and then we ataupun kita block the specific splice sites okay example macam H and RNP1 so, okay member of heterologous nuclear ribonucleoproteins okay so this is the proteins that kalau ada family ni maybe dia boleh um, block the specific uh, splice sites okay yang boleh menjadi repressor untuk satu-satu uh, alternative splicing untuk happen so this is the process of inhibitions of splicing by HNRNP1, okay, heterologous proteins, okay. So dia akan bind dekat sini, okay. So bila dia bind, so dia tak boleh nak, tak boleh nak apa, buang benda tu, okay. Sebab HNRNP each end of the axon and it conceals with the loop, within the loops. So tak boleh nak buang intron tu. Intron tu tidak boleh dikeluarkan. So masa sama juga dengan ni ataupun dia ada uh, HNRNP1 ni akan coated keseluruhan intron. So this is the process macam mana kalau kita nak inhibit the splicing uh, mechanisms uh, dekat dalam kita punya mRNA. Okay. Kita kena ada banyak so, macam mana kita nak tahu uh, alternative uh, splicing, okay? Uh, alternative transcripts. Uh, macam mana kita nak tahu? Yang paling simple sekali, okay? Yang paling simple sekali yang ni lah by PCR. Ah, uh, PCR lah paling simple sekali. So, tapi kalau kamu, kamu firstly you need to design the primer that have overlap the intron and axon junction. Okay, kita kena ada. So you have the intron kat sini, intron, 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 this is the axon. So macam mana kamu cerita, kamu design the primer yang akan overlap on this one. Do PCR on the whole RNA from particular tissue or particular stage in development. So kita buat satu primer yang kita design akan overlap, confirm akan overlap, okay. So you design, we have 20 base pair of primer. So try design 10 tu dekat axon, 10 tu dekat intron. Sama ada dia boleh amplify atau tak. So kalau you got the amplification, you got the band ataupun ada setengah kamu tak dapat band dia. So you tahulah yang mana kawasan yang dia ada alternatif, yang mana tak ada. Okay. And then you do the PCR untuk semua particular of uh, the whole RNA. Okay, untuk tisu tersebut and also untuk keseluruhan stage yang ada stage development tu. Kalau maksudnya waktu fruiting, kamu buat waktu fruiting. Kalau waktu uh, untuk disease, maksudnya untuk uh, before you induce dengan penyakit tu uh, yang sihat dengan tak sihat. So you can see the difference lah. Okay, in term of this uh, alternative punya apa transcripts. So this is the cDNA library. Uh, this is the Kochiwa, okay, Hiromi Kochiwa uh, from Japan, okay, and his team. 
uh, that uh, inferring the alternative splicing pattern in mouse from full length of cDNA library and they are using microarray data. So kat sini kamu boleh tengok the combinations of the using the cDNA library and micro uh, and RNA, microarray punya data, it can identify the alternative splicing punya pattern. Ha. Sebab tu saya kata kamu kena ada sikit data daripada lab work Bukan daripada prediction saja. So bila you have this lab work Barulah you boleh conclude ada berapa uh, alternative splicing Yang ni untuk menjawab proses-proses seperti ini Alright Okay So Then this is the how they, they do it Okay the microarray for alternative splicing so this is affirmatory punya microarray, okay? So we have exon 1, exon 2, exon 3, exon 4, exon 5. So kita design uh, probes, okay? Kita ada design banyak probes, kita tak akan pakai satu probe saja sebab kita akan design setiap exon tu, setiap probes dan kita juga buat junction, okay? Bila you ada junction ni, you boleh tahu, identify lah. So you boleh identify Uh, dia ada isoform 1 and isoform 2. Kalau you tak buat dekat junction, you tak boleh uh, nampak. So, you dah dapat dah sedikit gambaran dia punya kedudukan tu. Ataupun you tak ada gambaran pun tak apa. So, you just buat the junction. Maksudnya, the first one, exon 1. So, the exon 1 ni is constitutive. So, it will be expressed. Okay, sebab dia memang ada dekat situ. Tapi, exon 4 Exon, uh, exon, exon 4, okay, this is the unit cassette, kita akan ada satu and then kita kena tengok junction, okay, untuk exon 2 and exon 5, okay, 2 dengan 4, 3 dengan 5. So, you try buat juga probe yang dekat situ, barulah you boleh identify uh, number of alternative splicing. Ini untuk satu gene, okay, ini hanya untuk satu gene sahaja dulu. So, kalau kamu cuba bayangkan, kalau kamu ada Lebih daripada tu. Maksudnya kalau kamu buat pakai affirmatory microarray, kita katakan ada dalam uh, affirmatory punya slide tu dalam uh, 96, tu paling sikit lah, 96 punya expression. So berapa probes yang kamu kena ada? Uh, macam tu lah, kamu kena fikir macam tu lah. So berapa probe yang you need to design untuk identify the alternative sites tu. Uh, yang splicing tu. Berapa isoform setiap uh, jin tu akan hasilkan. Okay. It's not really easy lah. Okay. So kat sini barulah kamu boleh nampak dia punya reading. Dan kamu boleh uh, calculate. Okay. Daripada situ kamu boleh calculate lah. Ada berapa based on the expression pattern. Kat sini expression dia banyak. So kamu kata memang betul lah. Yang ni memang akan express. So kat sini kamu boleh nampak dia punya probe tu. And Kalau unik tu kamu boleh nampak lah dia punya unik tu sikit ke banyak ke junction dia tu banyak ke tak ke. Okay. Okay. Selain daripada tu yang ni dia kata dia buat another, another test. Okay. Uh, yang ni dia pakai uh, this is the ni lah case study lah. Okay. For NAXA7. Okay. This is the gene uh, that known as splice variants. Okay, dia punya axon C is present in skeletal muscle uh, but not in a smooth muscle. Okay, so dia buat array in one nucleotide expressing over the ANX A7 genomic regions and hybridization of skeletal and smooth muscle of RNA. So, they try to hybridize and dia boleh nampak lah. So, the splice site can be accurately identified using microarray. Okay. <coughs> so just uh, junctions of array can be identified okay instance uh, of the of the alternative splicing and combining estimate uh, from microarray and book sequencing suggest 74% of human genes are alternatively spliced okay 74 of human is quite besar juga amount to Okay, sebab macam mana dia orang boleh tahu sebab they have the, this is the MG align, okay, MG align ataupun uh, RNA genome align, 
they will use this database okay you will generate the the data from the microarray and they will put in the uh, mg align this database and they will see uh, what type of uh, connection okay between your data dengan data in the database so you can put the plain sequence okay you can put plain and faster format sequence or uh, in the text uh, editor punya versions ataupun in term of work word word punya microsoft word punya ni file so it's depend you nak letak dekat dalam text box you plain sequence ataupun yang plain ataupun fasta yang dalam bentuk text editor not bad ataupun you nak letak dalam bentuk words okay microsoft word okay so you can put everything in this web service okay oh ini accept oh you tak boleh masuk ni accept you tak boleh letak yang dalam bentuk not pad dengan sini so the example uh, kamu boleh tengoklah dekat sini some example how to put the 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 data accept Okay, the please to place the sequence in the top and hit submit if you need using the tutorials. Okay. Accept. Okay, the web service accept the following format. Okay, dia terima. Bukan accept. Okay. My bad, my bad. Salah baca. Okay, yang ni betul lah yang saya cakap tadi tu dia boleh baca dari segi semua benda ni. It's, it's quite good lah. Dia boleh terima dalam banyak uh, format. Okay, it's not strict kepada satu format saja. So, ada setengah-setengah tu you boleh upload dalam FASTA saja, which is yang daripada uh, text editor. Dia tak boleh, tak semua boleh terima yang daripada Word sebenarnya. Ha, tapi MG Aligns, dia boleh terima yang dalam Microsoft Word. Which is kalau ada setengah-setengah orang tu, dia tak pandai nak pakai Notepad. Uh, dia lagi prefer tu pakai uh, Microsoft Word. Uh, dia bolehlah pakai ni untuk tengok dia punya alignment tu. So nanti dia akan keluarlah dekat sini. This is the schematics of uh, MG aligned approach. Okay. So nampaklah kat sini uh, yang mana dia akan baca, yang mana kita punya intron, yang mana kita punya exon based on kita punya probe dan uh, data yang kita akan tengok. Okay, so kat sini baru kamu nampak ada berapa banyak isoform yang ada. So dekat sini macam contohnya dekat C ni bila kamu dah align, okay dia get feeling kat sini dia ada trim so lepas tu dia boleh tengok dekat sini kat mana start, kat mana end. Lepas tu kita boleh nampak lah X1 one berapa, X1 two berapa and they will identify lah yang kemudiannya dia akan uh, dia akan trim lastly the overlap between the axon are trim based on the supply size motif. So yang ni dia akan trim. At the end you akan dapat kamu punya combination tu. So this is what MG align punya results. Okay semua okay ke? Okay Dr. Okay Dr. Okay. Okay, okay so I think yang ni saja untuk ha, memang 10.59 pun. <laughs> So I think this is the last slide. Okay. So any questions before we end our class?